okay so here uh, first of all we need to discuss about what is the reason to go for hadoop okay what is the the reason to go for hadoop what is the reason to go for hadoop so before hadoop so do we have any other uh, uh, any other software or any other technologies so to do what the hadoop is doing now okay so hadoop is doing i think but basically if you if you go for hadoop so hadoop is doing only two things one is storage and processing so uh, before hadoop came into picture right so what are the softwares or what are the uh, i mean what we can say that what are the Knowledges we are using for storage and processing. These all these things we will discuss about. Okay, before what is the what is a, what is a uh, which what is the companies they are using for uh, storage and processing these uh, these different things we will discuss. Okay, so before going for Hadoop, so required a small uh, definitions. So one is what is web application. Okay, what is web application the application which is having client and server architecture client and server architecture the type of applications we are calling as web applications okay so what are the applications right basically we are having two types of applications one is standalone application and one more thing is a web application okay so in our software development 90% of the applications what are the applications in which we are going to develop is web applications only okay 90% of the applications so in today's markets are i mean in today's software market is web applications okay so if you want to design any web application so we required a architecture called as a client server what is exactly client server so i'm going to uh, discuss so here if you go with examples google or we can take it as an amazon so so many things so if you observe this google right so as a user we are just typing some google.com and what are the search we are typing we are getting some results but server it may be located at any part of the world but as a end user we are giving a request and we are getting the response based upon your request what are the request given we are providing in google search right there is a best example for web applications so generally these type of applications only we are designing in our software development okay So now what is exactly client server architecture? So let me explain you.
So assume that I'm having, I'm, I'm having some requirement. Okay. So just assume that I'm having some front end. So with, uh, with this respect to fields, with some couple of fields. So it may be some name, email, password, mobile, and gender. Okay. So generate gender, it will not look as a text file. It is a radio button. Okay. So just I'm giving some example on what is exactly web application. That is, it doesn't just have taken some form. And here my requirement is what are the fields in which, I mean, what are the values in which I'm providing for each and every field? Okay. What are the values in which I'm providing an each, each and every field? Once we click on the save, so I need to save the all these values to a database. Okay. So now it is a database. It can be any database here. So maybe some uh, DBMS. Okay. It can be some Oracle or MySQL. It can be any database. What are the database we have? Okay. And between this uh, front end and back end, between this front end and back end, here we're having a one more component called as a server. Here we're having a one more component called as a server. It can be Glassfish, Apache Tomcat, or WebLogic, like that. So if you want to design these type of applications, okay, there's nothing but a, we can assume it, we can assume it as a client. Client is providing some values. And finally, it need to save these values to your database. And what are the values in which it is already saved in a database? And finally, we need to display to the end user. Okay. So now if you want to design these type of applications, right? So we're using some uh, different technologies in our current software market. So that is nothing but java.net, PHP, Python. Okay, so many things. We're having so many technologies if you want to design these types of applications. Okay, so now here, uh, assume that just I'm giving some values for each and every field. And once we click on the save, Initial request will go to server. Server will communicate to database, and finally, values is going to save some values. So let us assume some name is Hadoop, email something, password, some mobile number, something. Yeah. So like this. So once you click on the uh, save button, finally the values is going to save into a database. And whatever the values in which it is already saved, right? So now these values just I want to display to the end user. I mean client, right? So now again this we have given a request, right? So finally uh, request is fulfilled and it will send the response back to the server and finally server will be. Uh, by using this, what are the response we have got it? And finally, the value is going to be displayed to the end user. So these types of applications, till now, we are designing in our software development. And 90% of the applications are web applications only. Okay. So now, once if you are designing these types of applications, I mean web applications, right? So uh, generally here at, I mean, uh, at a storage point of view, a storage point of view, where uh, most probably we're going with Oracle and MySQL. If my data is somewhat huge, so just I'm going with SQL Server as well. It is a one more database, SQL Server. Okay. So now uh, let me summarize some points. So now if you observe any RTBMS softwares, okay, any RTBMS softwares is going to perform two tasks. Okay, any RTBMS software is going to perform two tasks. So one is Stories and one more thing is 
processing. Okay, any RDBN software is going to perform two tasks. One is storage, one more thing is processing. If you observe my previous screenshot, right? So we have taken some RDBN software. So it is going to perform two tasks. One is storage, to store the values. And finally, these values we need to display to the client. There is nothing but Oracle itself need to process at backend. Nothing but these are the two tasks is going to perform by any RDBMS software. Okay. So now if you are going with uh, backend as a Oracle database, assume that. database so just today I'm getting data around some just assume every month I'm getting some 10 GB of data how much amount of data here 10 GB of data and assume that this Oracle database or this Oracle instance capacity is maybe some 20 GB just assume okay so day by day i'm getting huge requests from uh, different clients okay what are the requests which are getting from different clients and finally definitely at one day uh, definitely data is going to increase so for suppose if it is 15 gb on next month on couple of months so the data is increased around some 30 gb so now the can uh, now the question is can we store this 30 GB data in this Oracle database means definitely we are not able to store because so we have assumed that its capacity is how much amount of data it can store it can store only 20 GB so but we are we have got a data around 30 GB which was unable to store in our Oracle database so then if you are not able to store so for, for, for suppose if you are not able to store definitely we are not able to process as well right if you are not able to store means definitely we are unable to process the data then immediately what is the solution we're having so solution we are having is nothing but a we need to form a cluster we need to form a immediately cluster so nothing but what is a cluster exactly group of machines or group of nodes it has to be connected in a single network group of machines or group of networks it has to be connected in a single network here okay so now here i have taken some group of oracle instance instead of machines group of oracle instance We have taken some group of Oracle instance which are interconnected to each other. I mean, they are, they are under same network. And we have assumed that each instance, I mean, each Oracle instance capacity is 20 GB. If you observe the total cluster size is nothing but a 80 GB. How much amount of data it can store? 80 GB. Definitely at some point of time, we are unable to store huge amount of data. If I'm getting some one terabyte of data per month. Okay, definitely this cluster is also we are not able to store. So that is nothing but what is exactly big data. Okay, this one terabyte of data is nothing but big data in this cluster. It's nothing but big data. Okay. So let me explain some scenario. So here we're having some one Excel file. If you observe this, 
Uh, it is around 57. I mean, you can assume it as it is around 90 MB. Sorry, it is around 58 MB, right? How much amount here? 58 MB, right? So just I am opening with this Excel with Notepad. See here. We are, I mean, this software itself, it was not able to open. It is taking huge amount of time, right? So let me end this one. See, not responding status. So nothing but here, Notepad, first of all, it is a software, right? Notepad is a software. It is also able to process some data and finally it will, it will display to end user, means ours, right? But here, whenever, if you are opening a file with around 60, I mean, around 58 MB, so Notepad itself not able to open. First of all, was not able to process as well. Okay, it was not able to process. But if the same file, if, you are, if I'm opening with this Excel, so it is opening. Still, it is taking time, but it is opening. Okay, so this much of time client will not wait. So if you observe the notepad, it is taking some couple of minutes to open a specific file, but client will not wait this much amount of time, right? So that is about what is exactly big data. So this 90, I mean, this 60 MB, around 60 MB, right? This 58 MB, exactly 58 MB is nothing but a big data for Notepad, but it may not big data for Excel. Okay, so nothing but we are, I mean, I'm going to tell you the, the thing is, what are the data in which we are getting? Okay, so whether uh, if you observe this uh, 58 MB, Notepad point of view is a big data, but it is not big data for Excel point of view. Still, Excel is taking time, but it is opening, right? So if you observe, it is opened. Okay, maybe it will, we can say that some timing issues will be there, but still Excel is going to process the data, but definitely Notepad was unable to process the data. That is nothing but what is exactly big data here. This is the best example. Okay, so now here uh, we can say what is exactly big data. First of all, what is a big data? Whatever the data in which we are getting. Okay, so here I have taken some uh, 30 GB. If you observe the Oracle database, 30 GB. That, that 30 GB data was unable to store or unable to process by Oracle database. That is but what is exactly big data. Okay, what are the softwares in which we are using, whether if you go with a notepad or Excel or Oracle database. So if any amount of data which was not able to store or not able to process by any of these softwares, then I remember what is exactly big data. Okay, so let me define what is exactly big data. First of all, big data is a word used for Gathering of data sets that are large and complex, which is difficult to store and process by using existing database management system is nothing but big data is nothing but big data otherwise you can simply say that I will define you one more definition which is any amount of data that was 
unable to store and process by using existing traditional database database systems can be termed as big data okay any amount of data that was unable to store and process by using existing traditional database systems there is nothing but oracle mysql here existing traditional database system means nothing but oracle mysql any rdbms software okay can be termed as big data so if you observe here 30 gb it was unable to store and process by oracle database that 30 gb is nothing but what is exactly big data okay this 30 gb is nothing but a Nothing much, sorry. The limit what is exactly big data. So now if you want to solve this big data, right? So we are having a one of the solution is nothing but auto. The solution is nothing but Hadoop. So otherwise we can define like that as well. I mean not definition. Big data is a problem. Big data is a problem. Hadoop is one of the solution for that. Hadoop is one of the solution to solve this problem. Okay, in today's software development, if you observe any development, it can be some, if you're designing some web application or apps, anything, okay? So nowadays we are getting huge amount of data, which was not able to store by existing traditional database management systems. Okay, so that is the reason. So if you want to solve this big data problem, right? So we're having a, uh, a technology or we're having a software or we're having a, a complete framework that is nothing but what is exactly Hadoop. So this is the reason why every company, so they're moving for a, uh, a technology called as a Hadoop here. Okay, that is the reason why every company they're expecting uh, a big data Hadoop. Uh, within the Hadoop, we're having uh, so many components or so many ecosystems is there, which we're gonna discuss later. So these types of technologies they're expecting, why they're expecting uh, Hadoop or big data. Okay, they are uh, telling us a big data or Hadoop. So they need to expect from us nothing but a Hadoop because they're already facing a problem called as a big data. So if you want to solve this big data problem, we are going for a, a technology or we are going for a framework called as nothing but Hadoop. Hadoop is one of the solution to solve the big data problem. So that is the reason why Hadoop came into picture, first of all. So generally, if you observe this big data, right? So this big data problem, initially they're faced by uh, these search engines, either at Google, Yahoo, because these search engines, they will go into predict, uh, I mean, uh, around five years future. But suppose now it is nothing but 2018. So in 2025, just assume that Google is, is now Google is getting daily one petabyte of data. But suppose if I'm getting some 100 petabyte of data per day in 2025, so then how can I store the data? Or how can I process the respect to data? So these scenarios is going to, uh, is nothing but these are the challenges is going to face by search engines here. This is the same way how Google is thinking. So in 2005, 2000, in around 2000, so this Google or Yahoo or what are the search engines we are having or these 
such changes they are they are thinking right so for suppose in 2010 i'm getting every day around some 100 terabyte of data okay then how can we store and how to process that amount of data so leave about processing first of all they need to store then only there is chance of processing the data so if you are not able to store so processing itself is not there first of all my question is how to store how to store any amount of data how much for suppose if i'm getting some 200 terabyte or 100 terabyte so for suppose and first today I'm, I'm i'm getting some one petabyte of data so definitely i need to store so then only i need to process and one more example if you go with the whatsapp so around if you observe so this is my 31st 2017 right okay at uh, the 31st evening for suppose how much message is going to send so you are sending different types of messages right it can be a text or it can be a image audio file video file it can be any format we are sending today's right but whatsapp is storing the data and they are processing as well and for storing and processing they are not taking a minutes they are taking fraction of seconds only okay so December 31st itself, they will get some petabytes of data, not terabytes. Petabytes of data only they're going to get it. Because that WhatsApp application, so right, is the application in which they are using globally. It is not for a particular region or particular state. If you observe some access bank or net bank net banking services, right? So if you observe access bank, so major users is only from India. Maybe they're having some users in US and UK as well less when compared to india 90 percent of the users is only from india right but if you observe the whatsapp here within the india they're having some uh 10 uh, 10 crore users just as you so same way for us and uk as well right but if you observe the access bank 100 customers only from india maybe some one or two or maybe some 10 customers from different countries that's it but it is operating only a specific country access bank but if you observe the whatsapp it is accessing or it is using globally just you you need to imagine so within a single day how much amount of data they're getting because that application is used by globally even for google facebook e-commerce sites so just you you need to just imagine how much amount of data they're getting here whatever the amount of their data they're getting they were not able to store in our any RDBMS office. So nothing but what is exactly big data. That is the main problem. So we are facing in current software development. Whether if you're designing some web applications, right? So based upon your requirements only, we're designing our web application. Based upon the client requirement, we are designing a web application. So first of all, you need to visualize how much amount of data we're getting. So whether so our existing RDBMS office is supported or not. If not, so we need to develop the application from scratch by using Hadoop itself. Okay, we need to design an application. So instead of going with some Java technology, say that if you're going with the Java.NET or some other frameworks, what are the frameworks we're having? So just if client is getting a huge amount of data, so we don't have any other framework, so directly we need to go for Hadoop. So by using Hadoop framework, we, we need to design that respective web application, whatever the requirement is given by client. Okay, so is this points is clear, everybody? Any doubts? Any questions? Uh, what are other technologies other than Hadoop? Uh, other than Hadoop to solve this problem? We are having some, uh, uh, I mean, a respect of Hadoop, if we are getting some big data problem, right? So we can go with either uh, a cloud computing. Cloud computing is also one of the major solution to solve the big data, but indirectly backend they're using only Hadoop. If you're going with any cloud computing platforms, either Azure or AWS, right? These are the cloud computing platforms. So they are storing also huge amount of data, but they're using the different uh, i mean what we can say that uh, different processing tools but back end they're falling with hadoop architecture only okay is it fine sure 
Shiva, is it fine for you? Okay. So what is exactly cloud computing? We'll discuss later. Okay. So you need to, uh, this is nothing but a physical cluster, right? Now, if you want to create a cluster virtual, which was not able to see physical means. So just uh, within your company, you're having some couple of machines. It has to be connected within a network. So nothing but what is exactly physical cluster, right? But if you if you want if you want a cluster which it has to be virtual, so then nothing but what is exactly cloud computing. So if you you can go with you can approach with either AWS or Microsoft Azure. So you you need to talk with their support team or you can go with a free trial, right? So where you can create a cluster, either if you go with Azure or AWS. So where that cluster is nothing but it will be available in Amazon servers or maybe some Azure servers. So that cluster we are not maintaining. That complete infrastructure is going to be maintained by either Azure or AWS. If you're going with AWS, Amazon is going to maintain this complete cluster or infrastructure, this, all these things. We no need to worry anything. Just we can store the data and we can process the data, but not physically, in virtually. I mean, in Amazon account, okay? So there is a difference analysis there. We'll discuss this in our later. So this points is clear, everybody, what is exactly big data and what is Hadoop? Why Hadoop came into picture? Is it fine? Any doubts? Akshay, Babu, Pratap, is, is it fine, everybody? So what is big data here, first of all? Any amount of data that was unable to store process by using existing traditional database systems can be termed as big data okay that's what what is exactly big data Hadoop is one of the solution to solve this big data, okay? So now here, uh, types of big data. Types of big data. Big data is Widely classified or divided into three main types. They are one is structured data, and second one is semi structured data. And third one is unstructured data. Okay, so first one is structured data, semi-structured data, and unstructured data. Okay, these are the types of big data or types of data. So first of all, if you are going with the structured data, you know already these things structured. Structured data. So what is structured data here? The data that 
can be stored and processed in a fixed format is called as a structured data the data that can be stored and processed in a fixed format is called as a structured data okay so data that is stored in a relational database management that um, database management system is one of the example of structured structure data so now if you observe uh, uh, for suppose if you're going with a mysql or maybe some oracle so if you are storing some data right so we are calling with a well defined some column names right and we are going with some predefined syntaxes and predefined language sql language itself is nothing but is going to support any rdb software right nothing but what is exactly structured data nothing but the data if you observe here the data that can be stored and processed in a fixed format is called as a structured data nothing but rows and columns if you observe the data format in which you are storing in, in our any rdb software is nothing but a rows and columns format only okay so they don't have any other format because this uh, if you are getting some structured data means it is always rows and columns only okay so now here what are the databases which we are using i mean any rdb software right so is the best example of storing the structured data nothing but mysql it will store structured data oracle it will store structured data okay so this structured data it is already there and we already know okay generally so from the beginning of the uh, uh, software development or whenever the software came into picture so beginning only we are using these uh, databases only we are always we're going with if we're going with the open source means generally we're going with mysql but a somewhat data amount i mean somewhat amount of data is high means we're going with either oracle or sql server okay and if you're going with a semi-structured data so otherwise this is a best example see here something this is nothing but structured data okay rows and columns these are the columns and these are the rows semi-structured data here semi-structured data is a type of data which does not have a formal structure of a data model. Semi-structured data is a type of data which does not have a formal structure of a data model. So here data model means you can take it as a scheme. So if you observe the structured data, right? Whenever if you want to store some data in RDB software, so first of all, it is having a, a predefined structure. So we need to create a table for always some columns, or we need to create a well-defined schema. So based upon this, what are the data which we are getting? So that data will be stored in inside of our any RDB software. But here, if you observe the semi-structured data, so it does not have any formal structure. So examples is nothing but a JSON. If you observe JSON, so 
see here this is nothing but a json which does not have a, a format so because here if you observe id first name last name is address is there right so these are the if you observe uh, we are having some total fields is around some six fields is there but if you observe one more file so it may be this is also json data but it is a completely different so it is it is a different file and it is a different file so it is also a json it is also different okay this is nothing but a json and here one more uh, i mean some more examples is nothing but it, it if you go with examples so json is the best example and xml documents okay these are the best examples for semi structured data but if you observe structure only it is having only one format it is a fixed format in the put rows and columns but here semi structured data it is varying nothing but it can be a json files or xml files this nothing but is nothing but what is exactly semi structured data okay or simply we can say that semi structured data is anywhere between unstructured and structured data okay between structure and semi between structure and unstructured there is a bit what is exactly semi structured data here so if you observe the json xml right it is not exactly the format of rows and columns we are unable to define as well sometimes okay sometimes even software developers was it is difficult to uh, uh, predict right which type of data it is i mean whether it is a completely rows and columns or completely xml files or json files this this types of scenarios will come in, come into exist if you are going with a, a real time uh, scenarios here okay unstructured unstructured data the data which have unknown form and can't be stored in rdbms and cannot be analyzed cannot be analyzed further okay the data which have unknown format or unknown form and can't be stored in rdbms and can be analyzed further okay so otherwise you can make it as in till here so here you know already best examples of unstructured data files video files okay images so many things okay here if you go with data as a 100% in today's scenario 90% of data is a unstructured data 90% of data is a unstructured data and in which we are not able to store in any rdbms software that is the reason we are getting the big data as a major problem okay so what are the here audio files video files images these things we are not able to store in our rdm software here okay that is the but what is exactly big data okay and if you observe the google in previously so whenever if you type some keyword for suppose if i'm typing if i'm typing some keyword as a some keyword okay so latest technology okay something we are getting right see here now here we are getting some videos as well. if you observe two years or three years back right we are getting only websites we are getting only websites and we are not getting this videos because initially they are facing the problem they are not able to store and they are not able to process as well now they are able to store this uh, i mean 
what are the videos or audio files they are uh, storing some i mean uh, going with this technology as a hado and they are processing with a different processing tools it can be map reduce or it can be some high they are having different processing tools so if you want to process some unstructured data because uh, if you are storing some video file it is a unstructured data right now we need to process by using different uh, processing tools what are the tools we are having within the hado we are having so many tools is there to process some unstructured data here so now this is the best example okay so here they are uh, uh, providing some images as well this is nothing but unstructured data previously we are not getting this uh, i mean this much uh, this much uh, what we can say that this much amount of data which is understandable by end user so now if you are typing some latest technology if you are getting some websites means so we need to go through that websites only but now we are getting some complete images and if you want to uh, i mean if you if you don't want to read something so you can go with a video as well i think but end user is satisfied with what are the uh, keyword which i have typed in the search engines so here i have typed some keyword right we have got some results which i satisfied by by me that is the reason i'm going with google otherwise i'm going to go with different search engines right so end user need to get what he is expecting exactly that is a thing what everybody is expecting if you go with a if you are having some different companies is having some n number of client what client is expecting exactly we need to provide then only client will be bond, bonded with our company otherwise he is going for other different companies what are the companies we are having right so this is the best example here if you are going with a unstructured data okay so is it fine any questions okay so now here i have mentioned uh, one important point in i mean here uh, can't be analyzed right can't be analyzed so here why first of all why we are storing this data okay why every company they are storing huge amount of data why they are storing okay so if you are doing something means definitely we need to get some output right where um, some output means so what are the things which are doing in daily for suppose i am going for a job so why i need to go for a job because i need to sustain in my life right every every month i am i am having so much of expenses i need to sustain in today's life just i need to sustain on today that's it right that is the reason everybody is doing job and everybody is earning money so definitely we need to have some amount of money to sustain our life right so same way here what are the data we are getting so whether it is a structure semi structure unstructure so that is no need to worry but they are storing in n number of clusters or n number of machines why they are storing this much amount of data okay reason is so finally they need to get some business from that respect to data okay so are they getting business or not so let us let, let us explain you one scenario for suppose so we are having some geo okay we are having uh, geo since is there right so let us assume in 2017 right in march they are giving some 50% of cash back on the charge let us assume okay so almost some 10 crores people they have done some recharge okay in maybe some 2017 in march only some are uh, not much in may some 20% cash back maybe some two crores people so daily here in complete 2017 year right whenever they are providing the offers so definitely end users has to need charge so they will go with either so many websites right what are the websites we are having you can go with geo.com or paytm or different sites free recharge so different 
recharge site is there finally it will hit to the geo server right so just assume that on 2017 they have got some 100 terabyte of data 100 terabyte of data now this geo is doing this analyzing this data here okay what are the data they're storing they have stored some 100 terabyte of data right so now they want to what, what we can say that so they want to uh, analyze this data okay why why they are analyzing so first of all they need to store by using some residual some hadoop okay finally they have done so much of uh, r and on that okay finally they have got a uh, dashboard and user i think but now they have got some dashboard as okay so in last three months right we have provided some 50 percent cash back so these many users they have registered i mean they have paid this much of amount and in 2017 may so we have announced some 20 percent as a cashback so we have got some uh around two crore people and finally this much amount of data we have generated sorry this much of amount of money we have got it so nothing but like this finally they need to get a dashboard so finally they, they will get some conclusion okay in 2017 march we have uh, analyzed some 50 percent cashback so we have got huge business so because already 10 crore people has registered so there is a chance of if you are re-announcing this offer once again so at least we can get some minimum five to uh, eight crores of people again they're going to reach out this offer okay let us uh, uh re-insert once again this offer in 2018 as well so like that whatever the data there they have stored already 100 terabyte of data they are analyzing further in order to drive the business value from the data okay nothing but simply we can say that if we were going with the geo right so like that if you go with the e-commerce site whether if you go with amazon flipkart any e-commerce site right daily they will get huge amount of data and they will they will need to analyze how they uh, how how they are providing some offers to the end users if you're going with the recent so many offers they are brought by either amazon or flipkart how they're providing here based upon the user requirements because once if you go with the amazon definitely you're logging with your account what are the account which have registered with amazon or flipkart so once if you have search something so this search is captured at backend the final search is going to store in amazon servers or amazon database what are the database they are using what are the storage device they are using now they will going to analyze okay people searching so many searches going on this product or uh, this uh, these things okay so for suppose so many of them searching on some mi redmi mi phones or maybe some honor or maybe some google pixel okay so let me let us put some uh, cashback on this one okay some instant cashback or this five percent cashback so that they're going to drive the business if you go with amazon or flipkart these scenarios only they're going with any uh, business related sites okay not only business if you go with any software right finally they need to drive the business from client then only that prospective software company is going to exist right so this is the thing whatever the data irrespective of type right huge amount of data if you're storing means huge amount of business you need to get it but you need to do the complete analytics on the data what is the data in which are stored so first of all you need to store so first store is i can go with the hadoop if i want to do analytics on this data means so you can go with either machine learning or all programming or uh, anything but data science so many technologies there so by using of these technologies we can do we can go with analytics okay so first of all you need to store then only you need to go with analytics so current scenario if you want to store huge amount of data we're having only one solution that is nothing but how do we don't have any other solution till now okay either you can go with the hado or you can go with this cloud computing platform but these cloud computing platforms also indirectly they're going with finally they're storing in hadoop only i mean finally they're following with hadoop architecture only okay finally they need to store hadoop is the best solution to store the big data that is how we can define simply this is the simple definition hadoop is the best solution to solve the big data problem and if you want to go with complete analytics on this big data so we need to go for a further technologies 
So within the Hadoop also, we can go, we, we can go with uh, so many uh, Hadoop ecosystems is there. By using this Hadoop, Hadoop ecosystems also, we can go. And even we can go with some latest technologies. If you are going with in-depth analytics, okay? If you're having some one petabyte of data, I want to go with in detail. So each and every minute also, I need to get the, uh, I mean, I, I need to know what is happening in that uh, data set. So then you can go with machine learning or R programming or what we call uh, this uh, one more thing is that statistical. These things we need to go with a further in-depth, I mean, deep analytics on the given data. So you need to go with these upcoming technologies. So machine learning data science, AI, these things here. So Hadoop, Hadoop by using Hadoop also we can do analytics. That is up to the mark. That is fine. It is not a, I mean, we can say that it is not a worst scenario. Hadoop is also the best solution to solve to, to solve the big data and even you can go with analytics platform as well. But if you want to go for a further, right, then you need to go for a latest technologies, upgrade upcoming technologies like machine learning. So why you are going with machine learning means, so here I'm generating the data because if you observe the amazon.com, who are generating the data, nothing but human. We are generating the data. But if a machine is generated some data, then I think about what is exactly they're going with the machine learning. Because data can be generated from anything. I mean, it can be from any source. So you can take it as a, uh, for example, human point of view, we are generating the data by using the Facebook, WhatsApp, Amazon, e-commerce sites. So many sites as a human we are generating. But if you're going with the sensors, right? So sensors is generating a image. Sensor is nothing but we can take it as a, it is a machine. Right, we are not generating sensor. They just they are capturing, capturing images, capturing uh, so much of data, which is unstructured data only. Finally, right? Robots. What do they do? If you are using some robots, means robots is nothing but a complete machine. So it is also it will also it will generate some data. We are going with IoT, Internet of Things. Best example is some Ola or Uber. So how they are generating data? It is a IoT thing, but we are going with caps. Then only. When, whenever the cab is moving from one source to destination, then only it will want to generate the data. That is what is exactly machine related generated data. So many, if you're going with IoT, IoT is the best example is, uh, what are the caps we're using? That is the best example for IoT. So it is also going to generate huge amount of data. So finally, we're having a different sources, okay? So it can be human generated data, machine generated data, so you, internet, so much of data is generated by using the internet as well. Today's scenario, internet is the major uh, resource in which they're getting the big data problem here. Okay, without internet, there is no chance of uh, data generation will be happen. Because nowadays lost some three to four years onwards, there is a drastical changes in the internet point of view. So if you're going with our uh, either if you're going with a 4G network, so nowadays wherever you go, so network is always there. We're having a different switching networks is there. So if one of them is not there, we're going with you, right? So definitely we are, as a human itself, we are generating a huge amount of data. Without internet, it will not be happen. Uh, I mean, this much of amount of data is not generated without using of internet. Internet is the major player, so which we're getting the huge amount of data nowadays. Okay, and these are the types of big data. Okay, and this is the best scenario. Why they are storing huge amount of data? Because finally, from that amount of data, they need to perform the analytics, and finally, business will be delivered for the end user. I mean, client. This is the best use case. Okay, so is these things are fine? Any everybody? Any doubts on this? Is it fine? Any doubts? Jairam, Shiva, Shahu, is it fine for you, Babu? Is it fine? Okay, fine. So today I'm stopping here. Okay, so um, 
tomorrow we'll go into the further discussion okay so just i'm going to recall this today's session and we can go for further concepts and tomorrow very very interesting concept also we want to discuss what is how and within the Hadoop, how this data is storing right and what are the concepts within the how to with these all these things we will discuss so uh, i hope you have enjoyed the session so have a great day thank you